Good morning and welcome to Passion Church. So glad you could join us uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to be beginning um, a brand new series for the month of October entitled In Pursuit of God. I think this is one of the most important uh, things or most important subjects, most important priorities we as believers and really I believe for anyone <laughs> uh, to, uh, to look at, to assess, uh, to make adjustments where it's necessary, uh, because all of us can get very busy in life, and, and so many things are, are pulling at us, pulling at our time, pulling at our, our efforts, and so forth. So we're going to take a look at uh, uh, pursuing God, because I truly believe that that is the greatest uh, ambition that any of us can have, regardless. I'm not talking about just as a preacher or as an evangelist or as a pastor, but as a believer, as a, as a human being who believes on the Lord Jesus, one of the greatest ambitions that we can have is being in pursuit of God. Today, our, our, the title of my message is Desperately Seeking. You know, uh, I believe this, all of mankind is desperately seeking for something. I know we're seeking for meaning, and I think this is one of the compelling motivations of uh, all of us, of all mankind, the reason behind our endless hours of work, needing to purchase the latest technology gadget, or building the right connections in our career path. We're looking for meaning, which gives us purpose and an identity. So, uh, you know, we look at the ancient uh, civilizations, uh, you know, they had their idols that they built, and most of these idols uh, they built was in the hopes that they would be able to meet the longing and the needs of their heart. And so I believe, you know, in modern day society, our idols have changed, but the, but the reason and the purpose for them uh, have not changed so much. We all desire to find significance to our existence, an identity, who we are, and a purpose for our lives. And I believe that all the great longings of the human spirit find their answers in only one place. That's when we have a life-giving relationship with God. And so we're going to begin today by talking about desperately seeking. What is it that you are seeking? If you're listening today, you know, uh, I want you to really... Uh, ponder these questions that I'm going to be posing. I've got three questions I'm going to be asking today and, and making a few comments on each one of them. But more importantly, maybe than my comments, is the answers, the personal answers that you will give uh, to yourself before God uh, in answer to these questions. And so I ask you, the first one is, what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Is it possessions? Is it position? Is it purpose? You know, all of these things, there's nothing wrong with them in their place, but all of these things or any of these things can become an idol to us when they become something that we need uh, to give us a value, to give us an identity, to give us a sense of fulfillment. These things can become an idol to us. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19, he said this, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. What is it that you treasure? Some people, it's possessions, the accumulation of things and money and wealth. Others, it's, a, it's an accumulation of treasures, position, their standing, uh, you know, based on their uh, certain status symbols and, and so forth. And then some people, it's because, you know, they want uh, to be seen as people, you know, of accomplishment, of achievement. But all of us have treasures here on earth we can be building on. He said, here, moth and vermin destroy them, but... And he said, thieves can break in and steal them. But he said, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy them, where thieves do not break in, break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, uh, wherever our hearts are directed and focused, that's going to be what we're going to run toward. That's what we're going to be pursuing. And so if our focus is on possessions, if it's on accumulation of money, if it's on uh, position, status, uh, uh, achievement, any of those things, then that's, that's where our heart is going to pursue toward. That's going to become our treasure, and that's what's going to get our resources in life. You know, so we need to make sure that in all of these, whether it's possessions, position, or purpose, even though those things 
uh, have their place, that they have not become our treasure. They have not become the most important and significant things in our life, that we don't live just to make a living, but really we are, we are living to have a life. And that life is found in a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, if we look over to Luke 12, to turn over there, if you, you have your Bibles handy there, you can turn over with me. Luke 12, verse 13, it says, Someone in the crowd said to him, speaking to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, all those around him, Watch out. When Jesus says watch out, we need to watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of of possessions. So here's the thing. If we're seeking possessions, we're already missing the mark because Jesus said that our life, and it's interesting here, the word life is zoe, which means eternal life. In other words, the life that is eternal, the life that is like God's, the life that's going to, to continue uh, from now to the point we believe on Jesus all through eternity. He said that life is not dependent on possessions. This is why he said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God. And he said, then all these other things will be added to you. The thing about, you know, possessions, why do we, we seek after the accumulation, uh, especially of, of wealth? It's usually because of a security issue. We feel that if we can accumulate enough money and enough resources and enough possessions, that we will have security. You know, it's security that we're longing in a temporary world. But the problem is we live in a world that is always changing around us and we're looking uh, for resources that are also changeable. They're also uh, temporary because, you know, wealth can come, but wealth can go. And so here's the thing. We do not look to the accumulation of possessions, of money, of wealth, uh, as anything but a tool. They do not give us security. And our security is because what we have a fear of loss or fear of lack or fear of failure. So we're seeking security. But what are we seeking it in? Are we seeking it in possessions? Jesus said, be careful that, you know, that a covetousness or greed does not uh, become an idol in our life. And so we begin to pursue that. I know many people that, you know, they've got their goals. Their goals is they're going to, you know, they're going to be a millionaire by such and such an age, or they're going to do this, or they're going to do that. You know, we need to be careful in that, that, that that doesn't become our lifelong pursuit. Because Jesus said that you need to lay up treasures in heaven. And he said, where your treasure is, there's where your heart's going to be. You know, the thing about laying up any kind of treasure, it's going to take our resources. It's going to take our time. It's going to take our talent. And it's going to take our effort. So if all your time and all your talent and all your effort is given to temporary things, thinking that in them you're going to find security, listen, you're going to be disappointed because Jesus warned us here. He said, be careful. He said, that's not what, where your life, that's not where the essence of life is. That's not where the security in your life is. Our security comes from being in Christ Jesus. Our security comes from being uh, in the kingdom of God, of putting our trust and our confidence in an eternal, unchanging uh, kingdom with an eternal and infallible king, which is the Lord Jesus. So what are you seeking? And then, you know, the second question is, why are you seeking? Why are you seeking possessions? Why are you seeking a position? Why are you seeking purpose? Why have they become so important that that is your focus and that's become your pursuit in life? Listen, First of all, as I mentioned, security in the temporary, the reasons we're seeking for possessions, especially the, uh, the wealth, is because what? Of fear. There's a fear of uncertainty in, the, in this world around us. We live in a fallen world. There's a lot of uncertainty. We certainly see that this year with the coronavirus and all that's going on. There's uncertainty. But, you know, there's always been uncertainty. Uh, since the fall of man, there's been uncertainty because sins come into the world. There's fear. 
There, there's all kind of things that are going on that uh, we see around us. We see the, the instability, you know, whether it's in politics, whether it's in our institutions, whatever it might be. And so we think if we can just get enough money, we're going to be secure. But you know what? That's not the solution. You know, we don't have to fear if we're believers. We don't have to have a fear of loss, a fear of lack, or fear of failure. Because Jesus said, he said, all these things talking about, especially about uh, the accumulation of, of money and wealth. He said, these are the things that the world looks after. These are the things that people who don't know God, they're seeking after them because they think in them they're going to find happiness and they're going to find security. But security is not found there. You know, the, 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 uh, at Wall Street, you know, the economy can go up and down. You know, uh, the trading can go up and down. The stocks can go up and down. One minute you may be a millionaire. The next minute you may be a pauper. So our security, one of the reasons we, we are seeking possessions and especially money is because we think in them we'll find security, but there is no security in them. And then we seek pos, uh, positions many times because we're looking for an identity. We, 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 we want to be valued. We want to belong. We want to be loved. We, we want an identity. You know, this is why people, you know, people want to identify identify we said people want to identify you know with a brand uh you know that's associated with an athlete or associated with somebody uh that we see successful you know in a particular industry whether it's uh you know in the in the tech industry or the entertainment industry or something somehow we feel like if we you know if we wear what they wear if our if we use the same phone they phone use or whatever that there's something that identifies us there that we feel like we're part of we belong and there's a value there but listen our our identity needs to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, that's where our identity is. That's, no one values you more than the Lord Jesus Christ. He laid down his life for us. No one values you more. And being found in him is the greatest worth and the greatest value we can ever, ever imagine. And that's where we are to belong. That's, that's where our identity comes. Our identity comes by being found in Him. Our identity comes by being loved and accepted in the beloved, as Paul says. That's where our identity comes from. So I, it doesn't matter if I wear this or wear that or if I, if I use this uh, tech gadget or that tech gadget or I wear this label of clothes or that label of clothes. It's all superficial. It all changes. I can probably go back in my closet if I look somewhere, you know, and find something that, you know, that in the day was stylish. But if I put it on today, the people who are in the know would think, wow, this guy's 30 years out of step. And, you know, that's the way the world looks at us. Because we, uh, we don't follow after them. We don't run after and have the same identity that they have. And we don't have to run after and have all these things for us to know that we are loved, we are valued, and we are accepted by God. That's where our identity comes. We're talking about in pursuit of God. And our, our lesson today is about desperately seeking. We're asking the question, you know, why, why are you seeking? Is it security in uh, amassing a great amount of wealth or possessions? Is it our identity, you know, position? We want to identify with people who are successful, people who are powerful. But we said that our identity is found in Christ Jesus. That's our identity. And then the third thing is what are, that people are seeking, and we mentioned, is purpose. What is your purpose? You know, we, we seek, why are we seeking purpose? Because there's significance. We see significance in achievement. If I, can, if I can achieve something, if I can make my mark, if I can do something so that, you know, that I will have a sense of significance about myself. Because uh, we all have a, uh, an understanding that, you know, life is short and we're passing through and I've got to make my mark. But where is our significance found? You remember over in Genesis 4, uh, or Genesis 11 and verse 4, it says, uh, why don't we turn over there real quick? I can kind of paraphrase it, but we'll go over there and read it real quickly. Genesis 11. We're talking about why are we seeking? We're either, we, we're seeking possessions because 
we want security, we're feeling insecure in an insecure world, or we're looking for identity in our, our position and in the things that we're doing. And then we're also looking for, and let me just back up, we'll get to Genesis 11, but in our position, Jesus, and I'm just going to refer to it in Luke 14, Jesus gave a parable, or he, gave, uh, he made a remark about seeing people invited to a, a feast, and everyone was trying to, you know, jockey around and get to the best uh, place in the fe- feast, you know, get closest to the people of, of, of power or prestige or the seat of honor or as close to it as they could. And Jesus made this uh, observation. He said, if you're invited somewhere to a feast, he said, don't look for the chief seat. He said, but, he said, but take the least seat, sit in the back, Sit in the back, and he said, then what, what, what will happen is, he said, the host will come by and see you there and say, friend, what are you doing here? Come up here in this better seat. And he goes on, and he said, this is the way it will be. He said, if you will humble yourself, he said, he said God will exalt you. You'll be exalted. But if you exalt yourself, he said, yeah, he said, the host may come to you and say, friend, I'm sorry, but someone more honorable than you's come and you have to sit back here. And he said, then you will be humiliated. So position, you know, is something that we need to find in Christ. And in that position, we humble ourselves in the kingdom of God. We esteem others better than ourselves. We're not in a, a pursuit of a position, of a place, uh, of, a, of a belonging like that, of our identity, because we're already secure in the family of God. We're already secure in who we belong to. And then significance and achievement. The Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, in verse 4, notice what he says here. He said, uh, they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we would be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Isn't that still the same egocentric attitude that most of the world has? We, we know that life is short, that it is temporary here on the earth, so we've got to make our mark. I've got to, you know, I've got to found, uh, you know, a Fortune 500 company, or I've got to be uh, the vice president, or I've got to do this, or I've got to write the great novel, or I've got to do... Nothing wrong in, the, in themselves of all those things, but listen, if we're looking for that to give us significance, to give us a feeling, uh, you know, uh, of importance about ourselves, then we're missing the whole mark. Remember, we're talking about the pursuit of God. And today we're talking about desperately seeking. What is it that people are seeking? What is it, more importantly, what are you seeking? And then secondly, we've been talking about why are you seeking? To gain security and wealth, to gain an identity by uh, uh, identifying with this group or that group or with this brand or that brand or whatever it might be, or significance and achievement like here in Genesis 11, we're going to make a name for ourselves. Is that what you're pursuing? Is that what you're after? And then the third thing that I want you to consider, not only what you're seeking, not only why you're seeking, but here's the thing, how are you seeking? How are you seeking? How are you seeking? all these things? Is it by accumulating wealth? I mean, a lot of people, that's, that's their high watermark. And in our society, that's gotten to be the high watermark. Rather than character, rather than service, rather than, you know, someone serving themselves, you know, and, and uh, I mean, serving others rather than themselves, that's become an unusual thing. So unusual now that we, what used to be the norm, we're calling them heroes now. Or we can find somebody that is actually acting in a selfless manner. We think, boy, they're heroes. We, we put them up. And, you know, and that, that's good in its way. But, the, you know, the tragic thing is, is that a generation ago, that was the norm. The norm was not, you know, that we, we weren't looking and seeking to accumulate all the wealth that we could. But rather we were looking at, you know, what can we do? How can we serve? And that's really, uh, as we, we get into this further, we talk about our pursuit of God, we're going to find out that, you know, like Jesus said, that where our treasure is, that's, what we're, that's where our pursuit is. Our heart always follows 
the treasure. Whatever you treasure, whatever you value, whatever is a priority in your life, that's what you're going. And if it's accumulating wealth, then that's where you're going to spend. You're going to become a workaholic. Uh, I mean, you're going to, you know, uh, all, all the wealth you can accumulate, you can get. And somebody says, well, what's wrong with that? Well, it depends on where your priorities is. If you neglect pursuing God, Jesus says, it can lead to the damning of your soul. You know, so we, we have to understand that there is only one person, one thing that is uh, uh, worthy of us giving our lives to, and that is the pursuit of God. Now, that doesn't mean, sure, we've got to make a living. Sure, may, God may have called you to, to, to build that business, but you can't let it become an idol. So how are you seeking, uh, you know, uh, to find your identity? How are you seeking to find your, your place in life? Is it by accumulating a lot of wealth? Then it, with some people, it's status symbols. It can be education, occupation, possessions, all of these things. So we're talking about the question, how are you seeking to find your identity and, and to find uh, a value and to, and to, uh, and to create uh, achievement in this life? Is it by status symbols? Boy, that, that's a big one. That's, that's probably second right after wealth, at least here in, in America, in the United States. I mean, you know, it's all about, you know, what do you do? Where do you live? What kind of house you got? What kind of car you drive? All those kinds of things. Or, or maybe it's your education level if you're in academia or wherever you might be. You know, it's a status symbol we're looking at. And that's the way we get our identity. We get our self-worth from that. Now, and the third thing, how are you seeking? Is it about success, a position? accomplishments, recognition. Boy, that's a big thing, isn't it? We have so many awards now, you know, uh, you know that, that everybody wants to watch. They want to watch the Oscars. They want to watch the Emmys. They want to watch all of those things, you know. You ever wonder why they, didn't, they don't give a reward out to firemen or, or nurses or <laughs> teachers or, you know, nobody, you say, oh, that'd be boring. Nobody would watch that. Well, it tells you something about our society, doesn't it? What do we, we, our, our heroes are those that have captured our heart, that have captured our imagination. It's entertainment, it's sports, it's, it's people who've amassed great wealth. It tells us where our heart is as a culture. Listen, we're talking about desperately seeking, seeking for meaning. And the only way we're going to find that meaning is as we, we uh, pursue that relationship with God, that's where we find uh, our, our identity. That's why we, where we find our purpose. That's where we find everything that our heart is longing for. Let me sum it up today. We're just introducing our t- topic about uh, in pursuit of God. In Matthew 6, Jesus puts it this way. He said, he said, <clears throat> he said where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Your heart's going to follow where your treasure is. That's where your heart's going to be. Where's your heart today? Has God got your heart? Has he got it all? Or is he second or third or maybe even lower down on the priority list? How much time do you spend, you know, developing your relationship with him, pursuing him? Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either they will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. And he goes on to say, he said, here's what he says, I recommend that you do. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, what possessions, wealth, accumulations, all those other things. He said, they'll be added to you. But here's the thing, you know, they will just be add-ons. They won't be the thing you're pursuing. If we pursue God, when we find God, when we we pursue God and put Him first, then all these other things that the world thinks is so important, they just become add-ons to us. And it it really, you know, whether I'm a millionaire or not, it doesn't change the fact that I see myself still as valuable. You know, my security is not in my portfolio. It is in the Most High God. And you know what? My success is this, that, you know what? That I, I followed after God. I lived a life that was pleasing to Him. And that is all that really matters. 
Because in the end, no matter what we accumulate here, whether it's possessions, whether it's position, or whether it's achievement, it'll all be left behind one day. And all that's going to matter is what our priority was before God. I want to pray for you, but first let me ask you some action points here again just to get this. And I I hope you will really, really be honest with yourself in answering these questions. Again, what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Look, Look at how you're spending your time, your talents, your treasure, your efforts. How are you spending it? Why are you seeking? Look and see, why are you seeking this? Is this because God, this is God's uh, purpose for your life? This is God's direction for you here? Or are you seeking it out of uh, insecurity or fear? You're looking to, uh, for position, for something. Why are you seeking? And then how are you going about seeking this significance? How are you going about seeking it? Answer these questions. It's very important. And then as we move forward, we're going to get into talking about this, about pursuing God, not only the rewards of pursuing God, but how do we go about pursuing God? You say, well, that's easy to say for you, Pastor. That's, I mean, that's your job. That's what you do. No, 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 it's not. That, that's, that, that's what all of us should be doing. I would do this even if I wasn't pastoring. I, was going, I would still be in pursuit of God. And this is what he wants you to also be in pursuit of in putting him first, first and foremost in our life. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, those who are listening today, Lord, as we introduce uh, in pursuit of God, pursuing you, Lord, today I pray, Father, that we will all honestly look at ourselves through the lens of these questions that we've asked today. And we'll, we'll give ourselves an honest answer before you. And Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you will enlighten all of us, Father, every one of us, as to where we need to change, how we need to reassess our priorities. Father, to really shine the light on what we are pursuing in our life. Is it possessions? Is it position? Is it status? Or is it you? I pray, O oh God, that you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for listening today. Again, we're going to give you an opportunity, as we always do, to give into uh, the ministry of Passion Church. And, you know, this Sunday, you know, this is our, our mission Sunday, the first Sunday of the month, and uh, our faith missions pledges. And you can go on our website, and you can see on the pull-down there all the different missionaries that that we are partnering with both here locally and also globally around the world. And your uh, faith promise, all of that, all of that faith promise, all of that money is going directly in to, to support our partners and what they're doing, proclaiming the gospel, feeding uh, the poor, helping the, uh, provide a place for the orphans, planting churches, all kinds of things you can go on there and see. And so you, uh, along with uh, your tithes and, uh, and your offerings, I appreciate so much your giving of that faith promise uh, for the support of the work of God around the world. Uh, I want to read you a scripture here. And, you know, I want to remind you, you know, obedience opens the windows of heaven over our life. We see this in Malachi 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And he said, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing there's not room enough to receive it. You know, our obedience is what releases God's storehouse, his blessing upon us. And as we put his kingdom first, as we put uh, the work of the gospel first, and we are obedient to give God that portion that belongs to him. He says, I'm going to open. He's going to open the windows of heaven and the blessing of God is going to come on you. Thank you so much for your giving. God bless you. I believe with you this is going to be the greatest week you've had to date. God bless you.